uh, Chile became, uh, I'd say in the 2000s, the, the, the richest country in Latin America, as I said. And it's interesting uh, that people in Chile were not satisfied with that. They were not happy. Uh, starting in the 20 teens, primarily, uh, there was a big outcry about inequality. Uh, even though the poor in Chile are doing better than the poor anywhere else, in other places in Latin America, the rate of poverty in Chile is significantly lower than other countries in Latin America. Inequality became a big issue at about the same time it became a big issue in the rest of the world. And uh, they started demanding significant changes. They started demanding a shift away. I remember seeing a talk by Jose uh, Pinera at, at a Mont Pelerin Society meeting. Oh, God, this is probably close to 10 years ago. Maybe a little less, maybe eight, seven or eight years ago. And Jose Pinera basically said that the successful people in Chile, the rich in Chile, Jose Pinera, the architect of the privatization of Social Security, were feeling guilty. Guilty for their success, guilty about the inequality, guilty that they were so rich and there was still poverty in their country. In other words, the tentacles of altruism were deep in the culture. Chile is a Catholic country, very Catholic, as is much of Latin America. And it's impossible to sustain freedom. It's impossible to sustain capitalism in an altruistic culture. I think this will happen in Argentina as well. Although, uh, you know, as if Argentina holds on to its altruism and Catholicism, then no matter what reforms Millet actually passes, ultimately they will feel guilty about them. And that guilt ultimately manifests itself. Manifests itself. Tentacles is not good. Chandler is making fun of my tentacles. Uh, uh, manifested itself in the Chilean people voting uh, and, and starting to demand uh, a return to some of the socialist policies of the past, that it clearly failed. It got so bad that, uh, uh, you know, a, a few years ago, they demanded a constitution, a new constitution, a constitution that undid the reforms. I mean, the reforms are pretty deep, even to the extent that uh, schools here, there's a, there's a lot more privatization or semi-privatization of the schooling system. There's a lot more private health care here than there is in any other place in Latin America. So, you have, so they demanded in UK, uh, that there be a constitutional convention to undo the liberalization, and they landed up electing a leftist Marxist president. Now, what's interesting is that they, when the leftist Marxist president came into power, uh, that... Uh, the Chilean economy started doing poorly. Uh, crime rates started to increase. Uh, and, and people started to regret their shift to the left. I don't think they regret their opposition to the liberalization. But they don't like this president. Partially because of their regret around the shift to the left. Uh, when a constitution was presented to them they would undo the reforms of liberalization and would make Chile a much more socialist country. They turned that down. They voted against it. it, was, it was, it's interesting, though, that when it went back to the Constitutional Convention and they adopted a right-wing constitution, a much more religious constitution, constitution that banned abortion and things like that, and that came to a vote, they voted that down, so that's good. So the, 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 it seems like the Chileans are not 
ready to embrace statism of left or right, at least not at the constitutional level. And now uh, the current president is very unpopular. I think his popularity is lower than that of Biden. I think his, 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 his approval rating is something like 25%. And in the coming election, it's likely that a right-wing status will be elected. Um, I, I, it's, I mean, it would be amazing if, maybe inspired by the election of Millet in Argentina, that uh, somebody with a more free market credentials get, gets elected, so we don't have a right-wing status replacing a, replacing a left-wing status, and, you know, big deal. Uh, but, uh, so it's going to be interesting. I, I will know more about the political situation in Chile uh, in the next few days as I meet Chileans and as we talk about these things and I get a lot of insight from the locals. This is more me speculating right now than anything else. Uh, but they do seem to be some strong candidates who are likely to defeat the leftist president in the coming election. Obviously, some of the reforms have been undone. Uh, there are, uh, there are, the momentum of reforms has slowed. Economic progress has slowed significantly. Um, and while Chile is still a relatively wealthy place, and you can see it looking out the window at how many new buildings there are here and, and how much cleaner and nicer Santiago is from the perspective of just, just you know, expression of wealth. Uh, than, let's say, uh, uh, Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo or, uh, or uh, Buenos Aires are. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a smaller city, but it's, it's, uh, but it's it, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it looks much nicer. That, um, you know, we will see, we will see what, what happens with this. It's a great experiment, and, and it's, it's really fascinating to see how altruism, you know, pushes a country, even though it, it, it has clear and equivocal proof that free markets have helped, free markets have improved people's condition. And they also have neighbors like Venezuela that have embraced socialism and, and, and gone from the richest country in Latin America to the poorest one. And they've got other countries that have declined dramatically in terms of wealth, like Argentina and like, uh, in relatively speaking to Chile, like Ecuador and others, you would think they would have learned these are the policies that are good. But if your standard is not individual human flourishing, if your standard is not individual well-being, then... Uh, yeah, if that is the case, then it's, um, uh, if that's not the standard, then if altruism is the standard, if guilt is what drives decision making, then people are willing to give up the wealth, the prosperity, the flourishing, the freedom in order to feel less guilty. And that's... So far, the story of Chile, we'll see what the next decade or so bring and how it develops in particular, how it develops in contrast to what's going on in Argentina. And again, who knows how things in Argentina are going to evolve uh, but, uh, and, and how much they'll be able to get done. But I'm cautiously optimistic about that. And the contrast with Chile is going to be interesting. Both Chile's past and Chile's future is going to be interesting. All right. That was just a quick rundown on modern Chilean history. Uh, and uh, I'll have more to say about Chile, I think, after I get to talk to the Chileans and, and get some uh, feedback, including tonight over dinner, um, after we finish the show.